My name is Jeff Willard. I'm here with Astrid Smith. We're part of DLSS and we're going to walk you through the digitization one-off request JIRA submission form. So we have two JIRA queues, one for patrons and one for internal clients. A patron could be somebody like a visiting scholar or a uh, documentary filmmaker who needs something from a collection digitized, whereas an internal client uh, it, could be um, somebody submitting a request to do an exhibition, uh, or just could be for internal development. Below is a diagram of the general process. So a client would submit a request, we'd receive it, direct it to the appropriate lab, we'd uh, digitize the item, upload it to our server, and then uh, send access copies uh, back to the client. Asprud is going to walk you through a book request, and then I'm going to walk you through a media request, a born digital request, and then we're going to talk about some special fields that are applicable when items are not cataloged or when an item has already been digitized. And now uh, Astrid's going to walk you through the submission process um, for a book. This is Astrid and I am posing as Jane Stanford who works with Special Collections and I'm placing a request on behalf of a patron who came in today, Moybridge, and he would like an image from a particular book. So I'm going to come here to the Jira Q I could navigate on the left here through all these projects, but instead my preferred method is to go up to the very right to create issue, which is a shortcut. Remembering the last queue that I used, which is the one-time patron request queue, pretty much the only queue I use because I'm requesting digitization. I am requesting a book, so I'll create issue. And now I'm at the window for creating the work order. For the summary field, I'd like to have some kind of descriptor that lets the lab know what the material is and what I'm asking for. So I'm going to use the title of the book here, which is Imaginas Mortis. Now you don't have to be too careful with the summary, just anything to identify the work. And what Mr. Moybridge would like is an image of one of the woodcuts. Image of woodcut. Now, that is from the Rare Book Collection. I'm going to abbreviate RBC. Patron name is something that we would like because in most cases we're going to be creating a receipt for this work. The description field is basically the most important field because that's where I'm describing the work that I would actually like to have done in words that the lab can understand and interpret. I've already written some information out. What I did was I used the SearchWorks record, copied some of the information off, off the record into this description just so that the lab can identify the item. I left the date because sometimes that's helpful and I left the dimensions and I included a link to the SearchWorks record just in case there's something else that helps them identify this item. I also typed out, please digitize the print of the skeletons helping the maiden dress. And I marked that page with an acid-free slip of paper so that they can find it easily. Here I'm indicating what this item is going to be used for. In this case, it's going to be used for a research paper. The next two drop-downs are going to help determine who has permission to view these images once they've been accessioned into the digital repository. View permissions drop down has world, Stanford only, and private. Um, I'm selecting world because these are going to be visible to anyone, not just particular to Stanford. The next drop down, rights governance, has to do with the copyright involved with various materials type. We have a lot of pre populated fields here. If you don't know which one to select, you can go down to the unknown or custom. Um, I know that this book from the Rare Book Collection is accessible to anyone, so I'm going to select World View here. The delivery date required is going to be our standard two-week turnaround time for patron requests. The tooltip is telling me that I can leave it blank unless it's a rush order, in which case I might want to put in some additional information. But in this case, I know that the scholar isn't going to be visiting for quite some time. I'm going to let the lab know that there's a lot of flexibility here. Today is the 14th. I'm going to let them know next month on the 14th is just fine. 
I'm selecting this from Special Collections. And I'm going to go back to my SearchWorks tab to get the cat key. So I can copy that in. I don't need to concern myself with the source ID right now. Jeff is going to talk about that a little bit later. And the C key pretty much covers all of these other fields. So I'll just come back down to number of images. Mr. Moybridge just needs that one. So one image. Number of items is the one book. Now, if you were to be asking for an entire book to be scanned, you can abbreviate rather than having to count out the pages or check the record, you can just indicate that you need a full scan. And in that case, we will come back to you with an estimate for how long that will take because there could be some variability depending on how fragile the item is. In terms of the handling conditions, I know that this book is in great condition. I'm going to put that it's fair. And it's going to be located in the reading room under my name. These I don't need to worry about. I'll just delete them. Descriptive metadata is going to be important if the material has not yet been cataloged. So in this case, I don't need to include any extra metadata because the C key is going to generate all of that. So let's go ahead and create and see how it looks. Imagines mortis, image of the woodcut. Looks good. This is going to automatically go to the lab. They're going to receive an email notification. I'm going to receive notifications as soon as they've looked at it, and we can communicate directly via the JIRA ticket. Let's say you want to submit a media request. I'm still Jane Stanford, and a patron comes in, let's call him Bob, uh, who wants a cassette from the Allen Ginsberg collection. And this cassette has not been digitized, so we're going to submit a request for it. This one, we're going to say audio. Summary, you're free to put in whatever you'd like here, although the labs would appreciate it if you could include um, just a short description of what the patron wants. In this case, let's just say one cassette from Ginsburg collection. Collection number and title. Over here, we've got the collection open in SearchWorks. Title is this. Collection number is M0733. Bob Smith. Bob is a visiting scholar. Uh, description, I suggest anything here that would help the lab determine the needs of this patron. Uh, in this case, Bob works at NPR and he needs just a portion of this cassette uh, for broadcast. So here in the description, we're going to say NPR request needed for broadcast. We'll just say broadcast for intended use. All that means to us is really that uh, we're going to supply Bob with a higher resolution file than we normally would to a client. Normally clients receive MP3 files, uh, Bob will receive a WAV file. Now, I've filled out these other fields because they're pretty much similar to what Astrid filled out. Only change here, delivery date, he needs it really soon. So we're going to put August 17th. Now for source ID, this particular set actually is labeled with the source ID. Uh, but constructing a source ID is usually based on the physical arrangement of the item within the collection. So here, let's just say this Ginsburg is set is in series 11, box 7 and it's the 21st cassette in that box. That's good enough for us. Now for format, this is an audio cassette. So I'll choose audio cassette. And it's just the one. So that's it. Great. And we're done. Creating a born digital or forensics request is similar to a media or book request, but there are a couple key fields I want to draw your attention to. So picking it from the pick list here, now I've actually got a uh, forensics request open already because a lot of the fields are the same. So here we have a Mac Mini from the Harrison collection that needs to be captured. 
I've already filled out the collection number, title, priority, patron name, description, permissions, governance, and delivery date, catalog key, and source ID. Uh, but there are a couple other fields here that you should be aware of. So preserve deleted files. Uh, what that means is when the forensics lab receives an item for formatting, they can capture everything, including all deleted files, or they can only capture uh, the files that are readily visible that you would expect to find if you were just, say, plugging this uh, Mac Mini in and looking at the hard drive. So in this case, we're saying no, do not preserve the deleted files. It does uh, contain restricted data, though. So in this case, there are credit card numbers on the hard drive um, that we want to make the lab aware of. The patron would like the hard drive photographed as well. Hit create. All right, looks good. We now want to bring your attention to two special fields, one for indicating that an item's already been digitized, and one for indicating that an item is not cataloged, and we provide you some space to describe the items. So we're going to just create another book request here. I'm just going to ignore these fields. Now, let's assume the item that we're requesting has already been digitized. So a patron has found the image in some interface, say Luna or Image Gallery. We check yes, that it's already been digitized. All we need is the ID number from that interface. So in this case, I'm just going to type in some number here. And that's it. That's all we need to know um, to find the item and retrieve it for the patron. This last field, descriptive metadata, title, is used when items are not cataloged or have no metadata. Say a patron brings in five images that are not cataloged anywhere, how do we describe them? Well, we ask that the patrons supply us with a source ID and a label or title for each item. I've got a spreadsheet open here uh, with five images that this patron wanted reformatted. So they have supplied us with source IDs and labels, uh, source ID being some descriptive term with an underscore and then a unique number. And then the label, these are newspapers, so the label is actually the title of the newspaper. And that just gives us enough information um, for descriptive metadata during the accessioning process. All we ask the reporter to do is copy and paste this information into the ticket. Now, if the patron asks for more than 10 items, we would ask that instead of just copying and pasting into the ticket, that this actual spreadsheet be attached to the ticket. And that's it. That's all we need.